Did you know that baking soda can be used as a fungicide? What is a fungicide? Fungicides are basically what an element or several elements combined together to battle fungal diseases and bacteria that attack plants from trees to roses to uh, vegetables to flowering plants and all sorts of plants. Its basic function is to prevent fungal and bacterial diseases from occurring in the first place or if they do occur to battle them while they are in their early stages. There are many different types of fungicides. Today we are going to talk a little bit about some of them but the fungicide of my choice that I'm going to be using to treat these trees over here is an organic fungicide and we are going to talk about that as well. So what are the different types of fungicides? Sulfur is actually one of them. It can be used as a powder or as a wettable powder or as a liquid. Sulfur's main function is to battle fungal diseases. It's very helpful for roses because of the fungal diseases that they battle such as black spot and powdery mildew and all the different, the different fungal diseases that roses tend to go through. It's also helpful against powdery mildew and other types of fungal diseases. But sulfur can only be used when the plants are dormant because it will burn any growth, any new growth on the plant. So when, if you want to use sulfur as a fungicide, you want to use it in the dormant season, such as for us right now or a little bit earlier in the season. Lime can be added to sulfur to decrease the acidity of the sulfur in order to minimize its damage on the plants during the season when the plants have their foliage on them. However, when lime and sulfur are combined together, they produce a rotten egg odor. So if you are not keen on that, if your trees are too close to your house or whatever you are spraying is too close to your house or to your neighbor's house and you don't want that smell to be um, spreading around everywhere, you might not want to use it. Uh, sulfur is organic, it's natural and as well as lime. They're both compounds that are found in nature. If you are an organic uh, gardener, that's something that you are able to use to battle fungal diseases. Sulfur is not very good at battling bacterial diseases, however. There are other types of fungicides that are good at that and most of them have copper in them. Uh, the one that I'm using today is liquid copper fungicide. This is great for battling both fungal and bacterial diseases. Fungal diseases like powdery mildew, black spot, downy mildew, and uh, bacterial diseases such as fire blight or rust. Uh, so these are things that copper is, uh, liquid copper is good for. Or you can also, I believe you can also use copper as a powder. I'm not exactly confident about that, however. So copper fungicide sometimes is also mixed with sulfur in order to battle the more stubborn fungal diseases. The one that I'm using today does not have any sulfur in it. If you are nervous about using sulfur because of the possibility that it might uh, burn your plants um, if they are during the if they are just starting to show some foliage on them, then you're probably better off not using it and using something else or what Purdue University su uh, suggests to do is to dilute that solution uh, but they do not say the amount that you should dilute it to. So I suggest uh, that you would get one that's already diluted that is for the use during the season when the trees are active and producing leaves and uh, maybe uh, maybe just starting to produce some fruits. I forgot to mention one thing about sulfur is that you should not use it with oil. If you are using horticultural, horticultural dormant oil, you are not supposed to mix it with a fungicide that has sulfur in it or uh, sulfur on its own because that will cause something known as phytotoxicity toxicity and that is basically an allergic reaction of the plant to the uh, mix of both the horticultural oil and the sulfur together. Sometimes when you mix different chemicals uh, you might not smell it but the plant itself will react to it. Just be aware of that and don't mix sulfur uh, based fungicides with uh, horticultural oil. I'm not sure if neem oil is okay, but it would have, I would personally avoid it as well. I wouldn't spray it together. If you have also sprayed your trees in the period of one month or less with a horticultural oil, 
uh, you are not supposed to spray it with the sulfur fungicides until after the one month period have passed uh, because that uh, horticultural oil can still be present on the trees and will react with the sulfur and will cause phytotoxicity toxicity in the plants. Another fungicide is baking soda. Baking soda has been used since 1933 at, for treating fungal diseases such as powdery mildew, black spot, and the like. However, baking soda on its own doesn't do anything. You need to mix it with an oil such as horticultural oil or neem oil in order for it to be active. If you just spray it on its own on the plants, it's not going to do anything for you. Horticultural oil on its own also is good at battling fungal diseases as well, but it doesn't cover all the fungal diseases. This is why we are using the copper fungicide also, not just to battle the fungal diseases, but also the bacterial diseases such as fire of life. Always follow the label on whatever you are using. The label on this copper fungicide uh, suggests to use between 0.5 to 2 ounces per 1 gallon of water and I am using 1 ounce per 1 gallon of water because I have stone fruit trees and because I also have apple trees and pears and roses and cherries that I'm going to be spraying and each of these require uh, different doses. The apple trees, pears, cherries and roses require a slightly less concentration of fungicide than the stone fruits such as plums and peaches and such. So I decided to go, to go kind of in between because they both require higher concentration of fungicides than most of the plants listed on the label over here. But by going in the middle, uh, I figured that that would be safe for both of them and it would cover both the uh, stone fruits and the apples and all these uh, all that family also whenever you are applying fungicides or horticultural oils or anything of the sort you don't want to go the uh, to the highest concentration or overdo it even because that's actually going to cause a burn on your trees and it might even kill your your trees or plants that you are spraying it on so always err on the lower amount of th uh, side of things instead of the higher amount because you don't want to kill your plants or your trees you want to make sure that you are protecting them from diseases but you don't want to kill them so don't think that by adding a big amount of the fungicide or the horticultural oil that you are helping your trees it's actually the opposite also on the label of whatever fungicide you decide to use it is going to tell you when is the best time to spray that fungicide on this fungicide that I'm using, which is a copper fungicide, it suggests to use it during the uh, season where the uh, buds are swelling but haven't opened yet. And this would be the perfect time for me. Today is March 21st and uh, we still have snow on the, <laughs> on the ground, obviously, but the weather today is super warm. That's another thing to pay attention to is the weather. You don't want to spray fungicides when the weather is below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to make sure also that, this, that the day you are spraying fungicides on have a lower humidity so that the fungicide can evaporate rad rapidly so that it does not cause phytotoxicity in the plants. Today uh, we are having temperatures uh, in the 50s and right now it's in the 40s and it's going to keep, continue to uh, go up and at night it is not going to be below freezing so today is a perfect day to spray the fungicide tomorrow it's also going to be warm and it's not going to be freezing as well so perfect day for spraying uh, you want to look for days like that uh, whether it is uh, in the fall season that you are doing this application or in the spring season you can apply this during the fall or during the spring you can also apply it uh, according to the this uh, uh, bottle over here that I have it's a you can also apply it uh, during the season when the plants are have foliage on but you have to dilute the concentrate and another thing that I want to mention is that be mindful of the insects of the pollinators the bottle suggests that you can spray it during uh, the flowering season however uh, insects like bees are very sensitive to fungicides because they contain uh, a 
I'm not exactly sure how to explain it. My husband told me about it. We have bees and um, I believe it is something to the essence that bees have a, a Bees have a fungus in their gut bacteria, I think, or something like that, that they are that allows them to. Bees need fungus, basically. <laughs> I don't know. They have a special fungal bacteria that, if they don't have it, they will die. And if you spray your plant, your trees, or your plants when they are during the blooming season, and the bees come in to collect the nectar from them and the pollen, you are going to harm the bees. You might also harm some other beneficial insects. So my personal opinion is, don't spray during the season when your plants or your trees are flowering. So you can find all this information that I mentioned and even more on Purdue University's website. I will put a link for the article that contains all this information down in the description box below. All right, so now I'm going to get my backpack sprayer and let's go ahead and spray these trees. I got the backpack sprayer. I have four gallons of water mix in with a quarter cup of the copper fungicide and we are going to spray the trees with it. One thing I forgot to mention about spraying your trees with fungicides or horticultural oils is that you want to cover the tree from top to bottom. You want to soak the tree with that. You want to cover if you have leaves on it and you are using a diluted solution. You want to cover over the leaves and under the leaves, the trunk, the branches, and around the base of the tree because there might be funguses or bacteria present around the base of the tree. Let's go ahead and get this party started. Whoops. trees in the front. I sprayed the fruit trees in the back. I only missed one just because snow came on it and toppled it over. It's 
about to fall. We're just gonna cut it down this season. <sighs> Did I forget something over there? We have two pear trees, two apple trees, a peach, oh, well, three apple trees. There's one apple tree that's been here. Those are uh, pears. For, huh? Those are pears. What? Pears. Oh yeah, the pear. I said pears, yeah. No, one of the apple trees is super old and it's not doing that great. We might cut it down this season. I'm just going to give it one more season and see how it's doing. If it's not doing good, we're just going to cut it down. We'll see. Right now I have two lilacs and a crab apple tree that I'm going to be spraying. Those are the last two and the crab apple is also super old and it's huge. I can only get to like a small part of it, but I feel like spraying a little bit is better than nothing uh, because uh, over the years that we've been here, I, when I didn't treat it, it was completely loaded with insects and I just uh, think that it's better to treat it just in case. I don't want any fire blight to happen or anything like that and start spreading over our property that's not going to be good. So let's head on over there and continue spraying. looks like some tulips are starting to emerge. Well, that's the first sign of spring over here. <laughs> Very exciting. I sprayed as much as I could on this crab apple tea tree behind me. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's super sunny and the snow is making it really difficult to see anything. So, uh, especially on the camera. And it's super windy, which is probably a good thing because that's going to help the fungicide evaporate uh, very quickly. It feels like a dry wind, so it's the perfect conditions for fraying, for fraying, for spraying fungicides. Uh, the weather is warm, the humidity is low, and it's uh, a little windy, so that's just perfect. That's what you want. Um, yeah, so. Well, those are all the things that I had to spray. I um, still have a little bit of fungicide in this container, in this uh, backpack sprayer. And I'm going to leave it in the backpack sprayer. And if I see any uh, uh, diseases starting to occur on my roses, then I'm going to spray those roses. I also have one rose over here that's just buried under the snow. I can't see it, it's super tiny, so I'm not going to spray that and uh, the other roses also part of them was buried under the, under the snow i still sprayed them but i'm not sure if they might need another application so i'm going to save this a uh, little bit of fungicide it's probably less than a, a gallon uh, in this uh, backpack sprayer and i'll use it whenever i need it if you are new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell to receive notifications whenever i upload new videos i want to thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you again next week and go ahead and click on this video over here if you want to learn how to prune your apple trees